Hey everyone, Shane here with eTrail.com. Today I have a 2018 Coachman Leprechaun Motorhome. I'm gonna walk through how to install the Tire Minder Tire Pressure Monitoring System. Adding a tire pressure monitor system on your RV, in my opinion, is essential. So let's face it, RVs are heavy. You know, it may come a time when you may blow a tire while you're traveling and it's too late. You know, you really, maybe you don't know until the tire actually blows. Adding a tire pressure monitor system allows you to monitor the air pressure. So hopefully you can get the tire fixed before you actually get a blowout. It's gonna monitor uh, high leaks, slow leaks, high pressure, low pressure, and high temperature. For instance, these tires, the maximum PSI is 80. Uh, let's say somebody who's driving this keeps them at about 70 PSI, 71 PSI on a normal basis. With the tire minor system in place, if the tire pressure drops or raises, once you have it set at that, at that 70 PSI, if it raises or drops within six PSI, it's gonna alert you. Nice thing about having the alert is hopefully you can catch it before you actually get a blowout and potentially hurt yourself or somebody else on the road. These are what our sensors look like. There's actually a single battery on the inside. Uh, and the batteries are replaceable. It actually is gonna come with a few extra batteries if you need to replace them, but you can find extra ones here at e-trailer. Now when I hooked it up, it already alerted me, but what I did is I turned it off. Um, I have the minimum tire pressure or the tire pressure set at 70. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it back on because I know these tires are low and, it's gonna, and I'm gonna show you what it actually does when it alerts you. You can see it's beeping, low tire pressure, and it puts a red ring around what tires are low. Now, as far as some of the alarms you will get for your high pressure leaks, if you have a high pressure leak and the, the pressure in the tire drops three PSI within two minutes, it's automatically gonna alert you. It'll say high pressure leak and it'll tell you which tire it is, or it will, it will put a ring around which tire it is. For your low pressure leak, if you have a low pressure leak, if you lose six PSI within two to 10 minutes, it's gonna alert you again and tell you which tire. Four, our low pressure setting. So if we have our tire, or each one of our tires set at 70 PSI as a baseline. If that tire pressure has dropped because it could be weather, it could be anything, has dropped 15% or more below that baseline pressure, it's gonna alert you, which is what these two right here are showing us right now. We have 15% less air in our tires than what we need. For high pressure, if our tire, we have our baseline set, if our tire raises 20% or more above that baseline pressure that we have set, it's gonna alert us again, tell us which tire. It also will alert us if a temperature rises. So from monitoring mode, if we push the center button, Going to show you what we set up these tires for our baseline pressure. You'll notice the PSI is flashing. If we press the center button again, it's going to switch over to the Fahrenheit. Now we can change this to PSI or bar. We got switched over to Fahrenheit. We press the center button, we can toggle through there and we can change our air pressure to you know, if we want to raise air pressure, minimum air pressure, whatever it may be, per the tire. We switch to bar by pushing one of the arrows. Fahrenheit and Celsius. This kit is going to come with a charger, a 12 volt charger. It's also going to come with a suction cup window mount or dash mount. Color screen, uh, very easy to see. You can see the light's pretty bright on it. For a suction cup, it just mounts right in the back. We'll take it, slide it in like that, and then we can mount our suction cup wherever we feel necessary or feel safe with it being mounted on our dash or on our glass. There's also four sensor kits and 10 sensor kits. However, you can buy sensors separately. It's gonna monitor up to 20 tires all at one time and allow you to swap between four different vehicles. 
Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's walk you through how to get it installed. First thing you need to do is locate your house batteries. Now most RVs like this, they're gonna be right under your second step. Then we need to determine where to mount our signal booster. The idea is to try to get this as far back as possible. And we want it outside underneath the vehicle. Because what it does, it actually receives a signal as it bounces off the ground. So what we're gonna do is this box actually drops down. I'm gonna mount this right on the side of the box, right here on this side, on the bottom. I'm gonna route the two alligator clips. There's a little opening right here. I'm gonna run them right inside, and then we'll, we can make our connections later on with that. To mount this, we can use self-tappers. Uh, they don't come with mounting hardware. I'm just gonna use some little self-tappers to, to install it. So I'm gonna mount this just like this, and if we look right up in here is where that hole is. We'll take our self-tapper. We can route the two alligator clips right up through this hole into our battery box. That'll help keep our wires up and out of the way protected and then what I'll do later on is I'll come back where that wire is touching that metal edge I'll just come back and put something on it so it doesn't potentially uh, wear a spot in there and cause a short we're going to take our two alligator clips we're going to hook one to the positive post and one to negative what you're looking for is that green light to come on your signal booster now as far as the alligator clips uh, it's, it's really up to you. You can cut the wires, they are pretty thin, and add a ring terminal and add them to each post. Keep in mind, even though you shut your power off or your battery power off to the camper, you're still running these directly to the battery, so it's always gonna be on. It's not gonna draw a whole lot of power, but let's say you leave it sitting for several months on end. It could potentially run it down enough where you may have an issue when you go to start it. Having them like this with the alligator clips you know, once you're done for the winter or something, you can go in and just pull off one of the clips and disconnect it from the battery. Once you have your signal booster installed and it's powered up, you're gonna come, you can start on either side of the vehicle. I like to start in the front. You're gonna have a nut that comes in the kit for each valve stem. We're gonna thread that nut on. We're gonna take all of our sensors and we're gonna insert one of the batteries that comes with it. We're gonna thread it onto the end of the valve stem. And then we're gonna tighten the nut up against it. It's gonna come with a little wrench. So you can do that. We're gonna turn on our screen by pushing the center button. The left and right arrow, we're gonna push them at the same time. We're gonna hold them. And it basically goes in, when you see the L in the middle, it's in learn mode. Once you're in learn mode, if you choose your position, which we're at the front left driver's side, we'll screw on the first transmitter. It automatically brings it up. We'll use our arrows. Oh, now we'll go over and do the passenger side. And we'll just keep repeating that until we get all of our sensors in place. You can set it up however you want. This is this particular motorhome has six wheels, so now I'm gonna go back over the driver's side, we'll do the outside wheel, and then we'll do the inside wheel. And we can go over and do the same thing on the passenger side. Once you have all your sensors installed, you're gonna press the left and right arrow to switch you back to monitoring mode. Once you get to monitoring mode, we can set a tire minimum or maximum pressure. Pull down the center button. It'll toggle over to your first tire. It allows you to change tire pressure. So we're gonna set it at the maximum of 80 PSI. Hit our square button and we'll move over to the next one. We'll do that same thing with all of our tires. You wanna make sure 
you read the rear tires to make sure they're not a different pressure or the maximum pressure is not different. Now with our maximum pressure, our tire pressure set at 80, the low pressure sensor came on to tell us that our tires are low and you can see it has a red square that surrounds us to tell us which ones are low. So now that we have the towed vehicle or the flat towed vehicle behind our motor home hooked up to our system, it's gonna to automatically toggle between the two so it will monitor both. Once you've got all your uh, sensors installed, you're basically ready to go. Uh, you can switch this from front to back to where you can do the front wheels and the back wheels. Uh, we're actually adding another vehicle. So I left every wheel or tire on this vehicle for the front and when I add to the second vehicle, I'm gonna put those on the back. Once you've added all those, you're really ready to go. It's gonna do it for look at and installation on the tire monitor, tire pressure monitor system on a 2018 Coachman Leprechaun Motorhome.